This is MJ. I'm an author, I'm an artist, I'm an analyzer. Find all my work at mjmunoz.com. Henshin Inspection presents Super Sentai Sanctuary. I will be discussing what's the deal with the not-so-secret identities. Uh, this is Super Sentai Sanctuary, episode 11, Fight Seriously. The episode is Avatar of Sentai Don Brothers 11, As Sick as a Dog, which originally aired May 15, 2022. The writer is Toshiki Inoue, the director is Kyohei Yamaguchi. So I'm going to skip the synopsis for now, and I'm just going to basically go into this. Uh, my question in the reflections is based off that, you know, silly little Seinfeld joke there. That, uh, you know, why is the secret identity thing being brought up in this episode? Is it just a bit or a gag, or is this show actually about identity somehow? These characters do have avatars uh, that they change into. It's called Avatar Sentai. So you would think that an avatar is like a different identity, so that might be what the show is about. But more than that, we have other interesting things that are in the show that have to do with identity. We have Miho and Natsumi being played by the same actress, possibly being the same person in the show. Uh, we don't really, or I don't know that because I haven't watched episode 12 and 13, and maybe those have already gone into it, but anyway, I'm catching up. So based on what I know now, uh, they might be the same exact person, or they might be the same person, or they might be two people who look identical or are identical to each other, except for they have like a different set of memories. So kind of like, what is it called? The Ship of Theseus or Theseus? You know, I don't know if that's what it's called or not, but I think you know what I'm talking about. If they're, let's say, like one of them is a copy of the other or something like that, can they have separate lives? Do they have separate identities? Is one Natsumi, uh, dog boy's, you know, girlfriend, and the other one, Miho, uh, pheasant boy's wife? It, does it work like that? Can it work like that? Is that even something the show's talking about? We also have the, uh, some weird stuff with identity, like the uh, Cerebrans know who Jin is, but they call him... I think they call him the Guardian, or... Good golly, Miss Molly. Anyway, they call him the Guardian, or the Protector, or something like that, and he's in jail for some sin that he committed sometime in the past. We don't know when that was. Was it when uh, Momo Uchara was young, or when he was older? Was it recently? Um, somehow, he is stopping the bestials from coming over, uh, except for they have kind of come over, and he's saying while he's in this you know, AR realm, they shouldn't be able to come over. So, like, he's got multiple identities, too. And, like, we had the thing uh, previously where uh, Haruka got swapped out of her role as uh, Oni's sister. And another lady was Oni's sister instead for a time. And when this lady was Oni's sister, like, reality had been changed. People's memories had been wiped. And they didn't know. None of the Don brothers knew Haruka. And the team had a totally different dynamic and then when Haruka became Oni's sister again reality was changed and she went back into the role of Oni's sister and reality was presumably restored and she's con like it was just kind of a that divergent path got thrown off and uh, ignored and they returned to their regular reality where things are a certain way and that kind of has to do with identity as well. Like, she was filling the role as only sister than somebody else was. But because they're two distinct, discrete people, uh, the reality of the situation of her being on the Don Brothers, or the whole reality of the Don Brothers, was transformed because, well, they were two different people. And, uh, like I said, that could have something to do with identity as well. Then there's the whole thing where, for the first couple episodes, Haruka is trying to figure out who Momo Itaro is. She's trying to figure out the identity, the civilian identity of Momo Itaro, and she goes to different people and pledges their allegiance to them wrongfully because that's not who they are, uh, or you know they weren't him, so they couldn't do that for her. Um, and then like there's a, a a light version of it where Haruka, like in his fever dream, Natsumi, sorry, <laughs> Dog Boy, uh, Inuzaka sees Haruka as Natsumi and uh, he goes to embrace her and she slaps him, which is a good funny moment. Um, but I just, I really don't know uh, if the whole secret identity thing is supposed to be a thing. Um, I always found it peculiar that Ichinomori had uh, Takeshi Hongo hide the fact that he was Kamen Rider from his friends except for Tachibana Tobe. Um, and even, like, he would tell little kids who he was helping out or clients who he was helping, like, oh, I'm a friend of the common writer or the writer and stuff like that. And I just don't really 
get that. Like, I understand why certain people, um, more in Western comics, hide their secret identities, but not uh, not so much a lot of these tokusatsu heroes. It doesn't make sense to me. Um, and then there's other little things like, uh, or about this episode. Um, well, yeah, one other thing like, are the Cerebrans human or not, or how close to them to being human are they? You know, do they have? Are those forms that they transform into? Are those their monster forms, or are they some sort of heroic armor or suit that they get instead, and they actually have a human type form and they look human even though they're not human? I don't know. And is that you trying to address? You know, what is a human and what is a person and who has personhood? Uh, like we've seen with certain series. Oh, kind of like uh, uh, Inoue touched on in Kamen Rider Kiva a little bit with the with the Fengayer. So. I don't really know. I don't know if the show is supposed to be about identity. I, I was entertained throughout the episode. I, there was a lot of funny moments, a lot of funny gags, a lot of like just stupid stuff um, that was like slapstick funny. Uh, and then yeah, there was a peculiar thing where like the identities of the Don brothers are slowly all being revealed to each other and some of them are trying to keep it from each other. Like Pheasant is trying to keep it from Oni and Saru and Oni and Saru trying to keep it from Pheasant for now and none of them know, I believe. That Inuzaka is actually uh, Inu brother, uh, which is like hilarious because he's got Inu right in his name. But whatever. Um, so yeah, I don't really know what is going on in the show or what Inuway is trying to do, and if this is all working towards like building up the message of the show or the theme of the show. But I'm enjoying the ride, and I like it so far. Um, there's some stuff I could mention about the Beast Jewels, but I won't. If this was a normal week, I would, but just, I'm so far behind, I gotta catch up on this stuff, so I'm gonna cut myself short right now. Uh, I'm, I would rank episode 11 a 7 out of 10. It was fun and really weird. The lore of the show is wild and doesn't really make sense, but I really don't care. Um, and I think that's a pretty darn good compliment for the show. Um, I'm gonna highlight the uh, Holy Heroes Superhero Universe business plan uh, that you can find linked here. Uh, check that out to see how I plan to sell and package and market Holy Heroes. And uh, in a little while, I just, at the beginning of this, I worked on developing something for a, uh, like a catch-all podcast that I'm actually going to do and actually publish to on a regular basis, chronicling my journey or chronicling my writing. And it'll be basically behind-the-scenes stuff for Holy Heroes and all the other writing stuff that I'm doing here on mgmunios.com. So check out the uh, author, artist, and analyzer tabs. You can find more Super Sentai Sanctuary or find any of my other review series uh, on there as well, or you can check out my drawings or whatever you want, because, you know, it's your choice. Anyway, I'm MJ. I leave you with uh, peace and blessings.